Hey, it's Chris, Legion Games. Let's talk, let's make a bus route. Now, this seems like one of the most drab themes that you could ever pick for a board game, right? I mean, okay, I'm a bus driver, I'm going to be driving along the streets in a route, and that's going to be entertaining? And it's an import? Like, are you sure, Chris, that this is a good game? Spoilers, this is a great game. This is taking you as a bus driver around the streets of Kyoto, trying to pick up as many very different types of patterns as you can, picking up the most before hitting certain locations to score the most, trying to keep on route without having to break your route, and, as all good drivers, trying to avoid traffic in the first place. It is a different take on the uh, roll and write, if you will, because there is no rolling, there is just card flipping. But the other difference, as opposed to a lot in this similar genre, is it is a community board that you were drawing on in the first place, not individuals. So another thing to think about. So let's take a look at some of the gameplay, and then I'll let you know my final thoughts. Let's take a look. So here's the basic setup of essentially just the board of let's make a bus route because the setup for this game is incredibly simple. I mean, this is the board. You just lay it out and the board tells you everything that you need to know. Essentially, it tells you on both ends, depending on which way you're facing, depending on if your player count is being all around the table, how many of each of the types of symbols that you're going to be recording are out there. Now, it doesn't tell you the other three symbols that are out there, uh, the red, the blue and the purple, but I mean, those are relatively easy to figure out along with the schools as well as the brown. So not a big deal there. So then on top of that, you have your actual bus. I mean, what would let's make a bus route be without an actual bus? And so this is just another nice, simple sideboard that is displaying three things. One of them is the deck of color of cards. And so you are just going to be flipping these over one by one. There are six different colors, two of each color, and there you go. And so you can just flip them over, make your move, flip them over, make your move. You shuffle them up at the beginning. And so random order each time. And as you get through the pile, you're checking off the boxes so you can start to tell what's left. And you know, <laughs> if you're one of those people potentially plan strategically. So that pile just sits right there at the beginning of the game. Then now at the other two slots at the bottom of the board here, you place two of these individual goal cards and we'll talk about those. Well, let's just do it right now. So this means that goal one and goal two. If you are the first person to achieve either goal, you get 10 points. Then to let everyone else know that you've achieved it and to keep track of that, you just flip it over and then everyone else subsequently gets six. Very simple, very straightforward. It is what it is. This one, if you mark off five of these, like it's illustrated there, you get the objective. If you cross three of these red areas, you get it. And same thing, boom, rinse, repeat. There's one for every one, so you can rotate through, randomly choosing at the beginning of the game, which two you want to use. Again, very easy, very straightforward. The other thing that you're dealing out here at the beginning of the game, we'll just move that aside, are these secret routes. And you can see that they all have a combination of three different letters on them. And those correspond to the letters that are on the board. They might be a little hard to make out here, but it just goes in alphabetical order across the board. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so forth. So again, very straightforward, move those out of the way. Those are also a mark on the spot in terms of what you need to be tallying. And so again, we'll move that out. You can see here a little bit of the board if I actually orient it right. So here you can see again with a zoomed in version, everything that's on the board, all of those symbols from the map are now on your board that you're using to keep score of. You can even name your bus. I mean, the rules are relatively straightforward. As you cross them on the map, you mark them off. Now, if you are on a row in these two, you cannot mark off more until you deposit them at either of these areas. Then you can score and only then you can score. The more that you have, the more points that you get. If you have additional here, you even get an additional symbol to mark off depending on how many it is. This is very simple. Number of students multiplied by the number of schools gets you the total points. These are the three things we just talked about. Bonus one, bonus two, and your secret objective if you make it through all three intersections with previously mentioned three-letter cards. 
Then the last couple areas, again, that area that I mentioned of marking off which one that has been played, and then you can start to narrow down by process of elimination what's left. And again, this is the variation between all the boards. All the boards have the same symbols. They just correspond to different colors. So that's going to be the twist. Then you have this, uh, pedestrians, that you are going to be um, the elderly, I think, geriatrics. I forget what they call them in the rule book. And so if subsequently, each one that you mark off gets you a little bit more points. And then this one, if you ever have to break one of your routes. So as you can imagine, this board is not going to be completely kosher in terms of what is going to be able to be done sometimes because you just back yourself into a corner or back yourself into an area that you've already crossed. And so you may have to break a route and adjust one of these that does not fit. Each time you do that, you lose points. Then also here at the bottom, if you have traffic, if you ever cross streams, we'll throw a Ghostbusters reference in there right there if you're old enough to get that. If you ever cross streams with somebody else, you get traffic. You mark traffic up here for each second segment, not total turn, but for each segment of the board that goes across and crosses over with someone else's. Keep track of them around the edge. And depending on the player count, two, three, or four, you lose the certain amount of points only if you are the one with the highest amount of traffic. Then you play until the end, total all those areas up, boom, that's the game. Get a nice little first player marker here with the bus because you do rotate around each round in order to not give a first player advantage. The only other thing you need to know is at the beginning of the game, you randomly get to choose one of two starting locations. So these 12 cards, you'll notice also have numbers in the corner. This one's a little hard to see, but it does say four. And you get two of these cards and then they are numbered one through 12. And these again, correspond to places on the map, six, seven, five, 11, 12. They're in order from top to bottom. And you get to choose one of your two starting locations. Everyone does that simultaneously. And then you play. So shuffle up these cards, set them over here, pick two random objectives, grab my player board, and then go. I mean, it's it's basically just that. So we'll just play this as okay. Purple to start off here again. You know, let's say let's say I started off uh, down here at twelve. We'll just make it easy. So purple. I look on my board now. I can either do two connected lines or a turn and a straight one. So let's see. Okay, so I can go this way. I can go that way. I can that. Way. I don't really want to back myself into the corner here. So let's go straight here. And now this is the only other thing you need to know. Let's say I don't want to. I want to go over to one of the sides. But for example's sake, okay, I cross off my pedestrian there. I got one, and I end up. If I end my turn at a green light, I get to move one more adjacent space. So I can go any direction there with no penalty. You know what? I like this. I'm going to go over towards the student. Mark the student. And you know what? What did I just do? I did purple. Mark purple there. It's that easy. Next round, someone else would go first. Okay, then I would do my blue. My blue is three straight lines, which is perfect along this side route, almost like I stack the deck. And I wish I could say I could do that, but I can't. So one, two, three. Now I get one of these guys. I hit purple, but I don't have any here. So it's a blessing for me in that sense. And then, but it doesn't mark anything. And then I get another pedestrian. Mark my blue. Boom, that's it. Now we have green. We'll do one or two more. Green is just two straight lines again for me. You know, I already got the pedestrian and I already got one student. So let's get the school so we can actually score. Because as you can imagine, uh, anything times zero is zero. So this corner, if you don't get one or the other, uh, kind of SOL there. So again, mark off the camera, mark off the green. Let's see what we got here for one more turn. And we get a little bit of everything gray. And gray is a straight and a corner. Look at that. That's pretty good. And again, purple, uh-oh, though. Now I have to score this, so I would only get two points there. Not exactly ideal, but then I end up at another green light. And you know what? I want, I, I'm a fan of the school and the uh, students uh, in terms of scoring here. So we'll go with that and we'll go there. So now all of a sudden I'm bringing up the you know point total there. Mark off a gray. There you go. Rinse and repeat. Now, obviously, again, it's a little more crowded with more than just myself drawing. So take that for what you will. But that's an example of a couple turns in how you play. Let's make a bus route. Now, with let's make a bus route. It's an import. So I'll, I'll put that right out at the beginning. Um, it is not widely and easily available outside of Japan. It's just not. And that therein is its biggest 
detriment biggest problem. Which means if you are getting a copy, a lot of it is secondhand. Now you can start to get a few things on Amazon Japan to get shipped to the US, but it's a bit hit or miss as well. So a lot of copies nowadays are obtained secondhand through, you know, people have already imported it. That's how I got my copy. That aside, again, price point is there. I mean, I think the copies are going for 50-ish bucks before shipping. So that's not insignificant. If this was imported and picked up by an American company remade, this would probably go for, you know, 30 bucks and it would be high on a lot of people's lists, I think. But because of those first two issues, it's just not. This was my first jaunt, if you will, into this type, this genre of game. Now, the other con I'll say is I probably do not like playing this game multiple times in a row on a night. It is a little bit samey in that sense. Now, the new edition, because they just came out with a new edition, I think in the last year, has two different maps as well. So this map, instead of just being in English and Japanese, has two different cities that are structured differently. So you could have a significantly different experience back to back. And that is one of the next things that really would take this game to the next level and make it more worthwhile because just the one board right now is a little limiting at times. Now, that being said, if you go a couple weeks between playing this game again and again, again, the experience is going to be different. The other pro and con with this is player count. Player count drastically affects how much traffic is on the board. A two-player game, you can literally never come close to someone else on the board. A four-player game, you are almost guaranteed to get traffic. It is just a matter of who gets the most because everybody's probably going to have some, period. And so how much interaction you want scales a little bit with the player count. And so take that as you will. Some people are going to like that. Some people are not. If you like the solitaire multiplayer aspect of things, lower player count to even three, you will probably like. Now, if you do not like the fact that you can just go and get whatever you want and your decisions are going to be, you want some take that, you want some interaction, the four, sometimes even the three, depending on how conflicty you want to be, is really good. The other big detriment is these objective cards. I mean, there's only so many of them. But again, it's not designed to be this infinite depth and infinite variations. I mean, there's only so many symbols on the board in the first place, right? So it is what it is. I don't look at that as a negative. It's just something I am aware of. And again, I think that's why I play it every month or so, every two months. But it's such an enjoyable experience. It is another Japanese import that is just peaceful and zen-like to play. And the ability to have a little bit of asymmetry, depending on which of the player boards you get, is just nice. It's dry erase, so you don't have to worry about with a lot of other rolling rights of, you know, tearing off the pad or having to laminate it yourself. So you don't have to worry about with this, the player boards, anything. This is a game that's not going to leave my collection. Because I can already start to play it with my kids as well. So it's friendly in that sense. Now, <laughs> my oldest did not like traffic, though. So that was a big turnoff, and we kind of maybe threw a fit when we played it. But anyway, that's the take that side of things that you just got to be aware of, and knowing your own kids, of course. But as you saw, the iconography is easy. The interpretation is straightforward. The rules are relatively succinct and clear, especially in the fact that this is, again, like I said, an import and a Japanese first English second language translation. It's not confusing whatsoever. And so whoever did this rulebook did an amazing job. Because I have seen English rulebooks with English speakers as their first language do a much more chaotic, confusing job. It's not going to be some grand, overwhelming depth of play. And it, you can even make the argument that it has less variety than many of its contemporaries that have come out more recently. But it is also different enough 
that it fits side by side with them and doesn't feel like it loses its luster either to me. And that's what I enjoy about it. If that sounds good to you, check it out. It's well worth a spot in my collection. And like all Japanese games, it's not a big overhead. It's a very thin box. It fits easily. So it's, again, not a lot of flash, but a lot of substance packed in here. That is, let's make a bus route. Thanks for watching. Hope it was informative. Hope it was helpful. Stay classy. If you made it this far, if you like what you see, give it a thumb. Give me a sub. And maybe I'll see you around next time. Thanks.